Welcome to this Intro to Seaborne series. I'm Kimberly Fessel, and today we're going to be looking at the Seaborne Violin Plot. There's a pretty clear recipe for building a violin plot. Take one part box plot, and not one, but two parts KDE plot. Mix those two together, and your violin plot is formed. So you might have already noticed how the violin plot got its name. If you have a bimodal distribution and tilt that plot on its side, it starts to look a little bit like a violin. The violin plot, like the box plot, is a categorical distribution plot. In fact, the box plot and the violin plot are so similar that let's see a head-to-head -head matchup between those two. The violin and box plots share several of the same key landmarks. For example, you can find the median of your data, as well as your data's inner quartile range. And remember, that just ranges from the 25th to 75th percentiles of your data. You can also get a sense of your data's extended distribution via these whiskers. But there are a couple of key differences. The box plot alerts you to potential outliers in your data, whereas the violin plot features a kernel density estimation for your data's probability density function. Now that we know the violin plot basics, let's take a look at some code. To demo this Seaborn code, I'm going to start off by importing the PyPlot and Seaborn libraries, as well as aliasing both of those. I'll load some data in from the Seaborn library. These data have to do with cars, so I'm just dropping a couple of null values and taking a look at the head of my data frame. I'm going to set my Seaborn style to be white grid, and then I'm just going to do one more bit of data cleaning. If I take a look at the number of cylinders each car has, uh, most cars either have four, six, or eight cylinders, so I'm actually going to filter down to just those, those even-numbered cylinders, in order to make my visuals look a little bit cleaner, but just for demonstration purposes. Now that my data is clean, I'm going to build a violin plot by referencing the Seaborn library and then just calling up a violin plot. And now I just pass whatever data I'm interested in. So in this case, I'm going to look at the car's engine displacement. Now this is a pandas series, but of course you could pass a list or a numpy array as well. That would work too. And now we have our first basic Seaborn violin plot. The real beauty behind the Seaborn violin plot though comes when we're splitting our data up into multiple different categories. So let's go ahead and try that as well. For this plot, I'm going to pass in uh, both an X and Y value. And here I'm just passing in one value that is categorical, or the cylinders, and the other value, the y value, is going to be that original um, numeric value, the displacement. So you'll see that uh, Seaborn has split our data up into each of these three different cylinder types and then done a violin plot for the displacement of each group. Just to show you one alternative way to do this, um, if instead of passing in the series directly, you'd like to reference the entire data frame, you could do that as well. And now my X and Y values are just the string uh, column names. That will produce the exact same plot. But there's one more thing you can do uh, for these basic Seaborn violin plots, and that is reference yet another category, but we pass that through to the hue parameter here. So I'm going to pass in the origin of each of these cars as well. So now you'll see that for four, six, and eight cylinders, we've actually split our data one more time, and we see a different color for each of the different uh, car origins. So far the code looks pretty similar to what I demoed for you in my recent box plot video, but there are a couple of special properties for violin plots. One thing you might have already noticed is that the violin plot is symmetric. Now this looks nice for aesthetic purposes, but it doesn't actually convey any additional information. Let's take a look at a property that you can use to break that symmetry and show off more data. So let's take a look at a couple of those violin plot options. Um, I'm going to change my data set just a little bit um, for the next couple of examples. I'm only going to be looking at cars from Japan and Europe. So the first thing I want to show you is something called split. Um, as you'll see in this plot, we actually have the four and six cylinders, and then we have uh, both Japan and Europe for each of those. 
Um, but one thing we can do to actually break the symmetry of those violin plots is to put both Japan and Europe on the same violin. And that we're going to use this property called split equals true. So now you'll see our violins got a little bit more wonky. On the left hand side we have the four cylinders from Japan and then the right hand side are the four cylinders from Europe. So this is one way that you can leverage a little bit more information in each violin and we actually have the hue there to help us know uh, which cars came from which origin. One more thing I should definitely mention is that in order to use this split property, you actually must have exactly two categories for the hue uh, parameter here. So we can only have two um, here, Japan and Europe, uh, in order to be able to leverage the split equals true. So that's why I filtered uh, the USA cars out, uh, is so that I could leverage the split equals true. So one thing I kind of see here in the six cylinders, I see that there is a little bit of a difference between Europe and Japan, but I can't quite tell with the box plot. So one thing you might wanna do is change, um, instead of having a box inside of these violins, you can actually change how the inner part of the violin looks. So let's actually switch over to, instead of plotting a box plot on the inside, we're going to reference uh, inner equals quartiles. And now we'll actually be able to see where the 25th, 50th, and 75th percentiles are for each of these sets of data. Um, there is one more property I want to tell you about for the violin plot, and that is scaling. So currently, the scaling for each of these violins is actually going to be uh, proportional to the area. So each, um, each violin has the exact same uh, amount of area, and so that means that this orange area, if I integrated that, would be exactly equal to this blue area. But what you can do is actually scale these by the count. This will allow you to see how many observations you have for each um, portion of your data. So one thing I see right off the bat, there are fewer observations for the European six cylinders than there are for the Japanese. And you can see that now because the width has actually been scaled by the number of observations that I have. But there's one more kind of sort of misleading thing that's happening in this figure. Uh, we have scaled by count. But what violin plot is actually doing, it's first splitting our data into four and six cylinders, then scaling by count. If you would like to turn that off, you can absolutely do that as well. So now let's say um, scale by hue equals false. And now what we're seeing is actually there were just way more cars with four cylinders produced by both uh, regions than there were for this, the six cylinders. And actually we can verify that with a little bit of pandas. Uh, so here I'm just splitting up by the number of cylinders and then counting the number uh, for each origin. We see that we only have six and four observations for the six cylinders, whereas we have more than 60 for each uh, for the four cylinders. So using that scaling um, by the count and selecting scale by hue equals false, we were able to see that actually this six cylinder group was much smaller than the four cylinder group, and that's all with one violin plot. Awesome, let's take a look at a couple more styling options that are similar to those available to you in a box plot or a KDE plot. With the violin plot, you have several of the same styling options as you have with the box plot. Um, so right now, here's our uh, violin plot. If I'd like to change the order of these violins, I can do that with this property called order. And I just pass in a list of how I would like these violins to be ordered from left to right. Okay, and so now I've been able to switch to have Japan on the left and then USA on the right. So you can do this pretty easily. You don't need to rearrange your data at all. You can do the ordering uh, through the violin plot. Another thing we saw for the box plot, you can actually change the line width that is uh, highlighting the outsides of those violins. So that's just under this property called line width. And let's change that to three. Now you see a darker gray line surrounding the outside of those violins if that is your styling preference. And several other properties that uh, the box plot has, the violin plot also has. There are also several options you can set to control that KDE as well surrounding the outside of the violin plot. 
So probably the most important parameter we saw for the KDE plot is something called bandwidth. And so the bandwidth you can just access with BW. Right about now we are setting at a bandwidth of about 0.4. That's being set automatically with that Scott approximation, which is the default for the bandwidth. Uh, but you can change that if you'd like. If you'd like to uh, show a little bit more variance in your KDE, you could decrease that to, let's say, 0.2. Um, but just be forewarned, as crazy as this might look in a KDE plot, it's going to look double crazy in a violin plot. Uh, most of those violins look like they've been melted, or maybe they're in a Salvador Dali painting. So be careful with that bandwidth. I hope you've enjoyed learning about the violin plot. And you may have noticed that that violin plot, the KDE often extends beyond the data that you have. You can, of course, leverage a property called cut in order to truncate those violins. Or another option you have is to overlay a swarm plot. More on that in my next video. I'll see you then.